upstairs. Tammy, you guys can sit over there. You guys yeah. can sit over no, there. I just oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. our voices the best we can tonight. Um, welcome to our new building. Uh, the speakers in this room will be turned on probably tomorrow. We are right, we're working as fast as we can. So we will project and speak as loud as we can. My fellow board members, please. Um, but those uh, people, we are um, live and people at home can hear us uh, through these microphones. Um, so with that said, um, we always start our meetings with an invocation and, and a pledge. And this is a, um, it's been an extremely uh, full day, week, um, and uh, so we just wanna um, just maybe start with a moment of silence and um, reflect on everything that's happening in our community. And just very briefly tonight, there was an incident that happened at the Beaumont Medical Building. Um, every, uh, there's no one that's in imminent danger in the township and more to come on that. Um, uh, it was not an active shooter incident as some people reported. It was not an active shooter incident. It was an incident that happened in the parking lot uh, in the rear of the Beaumont Medical Building and our sheriff's deputies are handling the situation. So with that, um, if you could all just stand with me, we're joined by Pastor Josh Yates of the River Church um, on Baldwin Road, who's gonna lead us in our first invocation, our new meeting. Um, so Pastor Yates, if you could come up here um, but first, if we could just start with a moment of silence, um, just to reflect briefly on everything that's going on in our world, and then um, Pastor Yates, if you could lead us in invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight Honestly, with heavy hearts, there is so much that has happened in our community and in the Oxford community um, over these over just these last seven, eight days. Um, God, first of all, we lift up the Oxford community to you. In times like these, it's sometimes hard to know what to pray, what to ask for, because the pain is great. And Lord, I just pray, first and foremost, that you would bring comfort, that you would just make your presence so very well known to the families of Hannah, Justin, Tate, and Madison, who lost their lives too soon when evil entered Oxford High School last week. God, I pray you would wrap your arms around those families, that they would truly know that they are loved, and that God, in some way, your peace would envelop them, Lord. And God, when it comes to all those students that went through such horrendous moments, God, I pray you would be with every student, that, Lord, they would be able to know that they are now safe, that they would be able to ask for help when they need it, that they wouldn't feel ashamed to ask for help. And I pray the same thing over the parents, Lord, that each parent would be willing to ask for help when they need it. Lord, we don't have to have every answer, Lord. We, we simply need to love one another well. And we need to be able to know that we can reach out when we need help. And so, God, I pray that over all of Oxford High School, God. And for all the Oxford community, Lord, I pray that you would continue to raise up people. I'm so thankful for how many people that have stepped up, both in Oxford and in Lake Orion, that have just said, we're not going to let this overshadow everything, and we're going to stand up, and we're going to love each other, and we're going to show what it's like to love each other, Lord. And I pray that would continually be the case over the coming days, weeks, and this entire season. God, I pray we would look at each other as people that are worthy of love. No matter our differences, no matter our, our struggles that, that each of us face, Lord, I pray that we would reach out to one another as we love you first and we love our neighbors as ourselves. And God, as we, as we have leaders both in the Oxford and the Lake Orion community, Lord, I just pray you would give these leaders true wisdom to lead us through these times. God, these times are not easy. And we need people to step up and help us. And so, God, specifically for tonight, every decision made here in this chamber, God, I pray with, I pray that each, each decision would honor you. 
and you give real wisdom. Lord, I thank you for each one of the individuals that serve us. I pray that they would be blessed. And I thank you for this place that has been needed for so long. Lord, I pray it would be used to serve the citizens of Orion Township well, and that the decisions here again, made in this place for years and generations even to come, would be honoring to you and benefit our community. Lord, there's so much we have to give to you, and we are so desperate for you. God, may your love be shown so much in our community and in Oxford and the surrounding communities. Lord, we need you. We need your presence. I pray that you'd bring peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. And again, we will um, thank you, Pastor Gates. That was awesome and much needed. Um, as mentioned, uh, we are close to being fully done with this building, but not quite there. Um, there's some technology things, so we will do our best to project our voices because our speakers are not on uh, tonight, but the t uh, these microphones are on so that they can pick us up uh, on the live stream and for the recording. Uh, so with that, um, we would like to offer public comment, I'm sorry, first approval of the bills. And again, also we will have screens that will show you all these things in two weeks <laughs> at, the, at our next meeting. But in the meantime, you can look at all these items on our board, on our website. Uh, and so I would entertain a motion from someone, a uh, member of the board, uh, okay. for approval of the bills. I'll make a motion, if that's okay. Yes, yes. Support. Uh, <laughs> the, for the payment of the bills of $1,623,014.18. And with the support, just real quick, um, we have our Oakland County um, Sheriff traffic speed cart i'm sure people have seen that over on joslin for thirteen thousand. we had an emergency septic um, replacement at camp agawam for nineteen thousand. we bought a backhoe for the water and sewer department of one hundred and eight thousand. Um, oakland county treasurers uh, we paid our oakland county excellent sheriff's bill of four hundred and eighteen thousand. we had some manhole replacements during the heights repaving of 43,000, and we had to move the tower SCADA um, connection for our emergency dispatch uh, of uh, 26,000. So those are just a brief highlight of the current bills, Chris. Thank you for that summary. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Uh, could you please call the roll, Clerk Schultz? Dalrymple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. That motion passes. Next item on tonight's agenda is public comment. The first opportunity to address the board in our new our new board chambers. Anyone want to give public comment, just come forward to our temporary makeshift podium until our permanent one is here. Anyone want to give public comment at this time? Seeing no one come forward, we will... Um, move on to approval of tonight's agenda. I know we have two additions that I'm aware of. Um, so I'd like to add um, to item 8 uh, B, pending B, purchase of property. And then I'd also like to add to item 7, uh, I want an OP, uh, I just put my up there again, uh, purchase of uh, a fire engine. Um, those are my proposed changes, I know, um, or additions, I'm sorry. Um, are there any other changes or a motion to approve? I know, I think we were going to try to talk about the meeting. Yeah, I'd like to bring that down if we could. Um, item 7C, uh, Board of Trustees meeting dates, if we could add that to um, 8C. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other modifications? Um, Mr. Supervisor? Yes. I'll make the motion to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Okay. Um, it's been moved and supported. I was just double checking one thing here on my screen. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions to the board? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. We have an agenda. 
That brings us to tonight's consent agenda, which we will be approving all these items with one vote. Um, and tonight's consent agenda consists of the following items. Uh, we'll be approving uh, two sets of minutes. Um, we will be approving two resolutions, one for the Planning Commission meeting dates for 2022, one for the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting dates for 2022. We'll be um, setting the township closing dates for 2022. Uh, we will be approving the fire department annual hose and ladder testing, awarding a bid for the fire department medical and fitness evaluations, approving our Clinton River watershed dues, uh, second reading of the township initiated text amendment to our zoning ordinance 78 for industrial parks. Um, updating our parks and recreation fee schedule for facility rentals. Approving a temporary sign waiver request for the Oregon United Parade. Modifying the schedule fees and escrow charges in ordinance 41. Revising the planning and zoning applications. Setting up a public hearing for GM IFT tax abatement and purchasing a fire engine. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Okay. As amended. As amended. As amended. All right, on any comments or questions from any board members on any of these items? Just one comment. Um, yeah. Supervisor Barnett, there were corrected minutes for the regular meeting November 15th, 2021. Okay. And those are where, Penny? Those are in your board book. They should be the second set of minutes. Oh, as an extra? Not as an extra. They're in your board book as a second set of minutes. And I also emailed those to all the board members this afternoon. It, actually, I think it was this morning. Okay. Um, just a couple things from me. Um, we are awarding a bid for medical fitness evaluations for the fire department. This has to do with the FEMA grant that we received. Um, it's a very thorough medical and fitness evaluation for our fire personnel, which I'm excited about. Um, and um, we've got a lot going on. Our next meeting will be really busy. The, the fire engine that we added tonight uh, is a budgeted and planned expense, um, but because the lead time of these fire apparatus is between 18 to 22 months when the order, um, we did want to get this on tonight's agenda. Um, we did follow our purchasing to purchase policy as well. Those are my couple of comments. Any other comments or questions from any board member? Can, you know, and I, can I just talk about the fire uh, engine truck? So Ashley just stopped at my office on her way out, yeah. and she said, you approved it this year, it's budgeted for next year, and bought the third year, 2023. So just mm -hmm. that's FYI. And our fire chief is here if we have questions for him. Um, but these things take a long, long time, like a year longer than they used to take to get. One question. By ordering it next year in 21, it's at 11%, so it's going to go up 11% the year. Pay for it later and order it in 22, so it's a tough year. And this is part of the getting the fleet on a regular rotation, um, so we're working on that as well. Yes, Mr. Blood. Chief, will it be red? Thank you. <laughs> the answer, because he's not on the mic, and we'll we'll get this all set up for directors in the future. But the answer to the question, will the truck be red? The answer was yes. If you're watching from home, we're going to all red fire trucks, just like in the storybooks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other uh, comments from the board on the consent agenda? How about any public comment on any of the consent agenda items? Seeing no one come forward, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Burnett. Yes. Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. The consent agenda is passed unanimously. Um, moves us to tonight's pending business. First item on tonight's pending business is the sale of property to K Automotive. Uh, let me get to the right page. This is on page 193. Um, actually, it's uh, it was it was emailed out. I'm sorry, I don't have that right in front of me. Give me a second to pull that up. Chris, would you like this? Yeah, please, if you could. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the request is to approve the sale of property um, to KPMF USA, USA Incorporated, which is K Automotive. Um, the township has been presented with a purchase agreement for the sale of approximately three acres of township property to KPMF USA. As previously discussed with K Automotive, the purchase price is $270,000. Um, we did have a discussion about this uh, 
previously as a board in closed session with our attorney um, to, to um, and the board gave me the green light to work out the details to move forward with the sale. The property is a landlocked piece of property that sits um, directly behind K Automotive and just to the south of um, Palazzo de Bacci, just for people that are trying to understand where this is. And normally I would have a picture on the screen and unfortunately I can't do that tonight. Um, and so this property, the, the reason we would be selling this property to K is they're looking to expand their operations. Uh, the township does own the property um, directly behind the um, company and we're excited about them continuing to grow their operations here in Orient Township. This would also allow them to grow their property um, and to submit a site plan that will not require any variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so that's appreciated on their part as well. We did get some comps on property and the price that they have offered us uh, meets muster. I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good price. Um, for what uh, the per acre for a piece of property that is not fronting on 24 that is landlocked. It's actually, we're probably making out pretty good on this in my in my opinion uh, from looking at other, other things in the area. So that's kind of my summary. Uh, there's a motion in the packet for uh, for you all. Yes, Ms. Steele. I'll wait till you do the next pending. You oh. Should, you, yeah, you should use me with that motion. Can I read that motion, please? Sure, yep, yep, Thank sure. you. Thank you. Just mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I move to approve the resolution authorizing the sale of approximately three acres of township vacant land to KPMF USA Incorporated for the purchase price of $270,000 and authorize the township supervisor and attorney to make any and all necessary minor changes to the agreement and further authorize the township supervisor and clerk to sign any and all necessary closing documents. Support. Okay. Moved by... Schultz and supported by Steele. Are there any comments or questions from the board on this item? Uh, any public comment on this item? I kind of summarized it. Again, I apologize. We don't have um, the screens to show you today, um, but it's the property right just south of Palazzo de Bacci um, behind K PMF, K Automobile and Existing Facility. Yes. And just for the audience and the viewers at home, can you talk a little bit about how we're keeping part of that property yeah. maintained as a park? Yeah, so um, it, when the Heron Springs development was, was put in or was, was approved um, three boards ago in uh, 2012, uh, one of the agreements with the developer was they were going to keep a large portion of property south and east of those condos that were put in uh, as public proper, proc property and turn it over to the township. It's a passive park area. Um, this site is sort of... Uh, this is a little piece of it. We're, we're keeping the majority of it. Obviously, I think there is about 30 acres in total. Um, this piece is sort of separated from the rest by a wetland. Uh, and the other thing that's good that should be noted is um, they are not building anything on these three acres. They're simply using it so they have the right lot coverage um, formula. So it will, it will not be built on. It will just stay just like it is, but it helps them meet the lot coverage that's required in our ordinance. Thank you. Yeah, good questions. All right, um, any public comment on this? Seeing none, um, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Schultz, yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimple? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. That passes 7-0. This was an add-on tonight because I got a letter last week from the Road Commission asking if the township would be interested um, in purchasing property. Um, parcels number 0929-326-021 and 022. There are two par connected parcels. They are on the east side of Baldwin Road, um, directly north of Gregory. Um, they are just north of the building that's called the District, and just across the street from the River Church. Um, and I, so just uh, formerly Gingeville Community Church, we'll say that for a while so people know <laughs> um, that you guys are, have um, changed. Um, and that's a good thing for, for the community. Uh, so anyway, sorry, I lost my page here. Um, that said, the Road Commission has this excess property from the Baldwin um, Road Construction Project. That is most of our, um, I know our board members are fully aware, but many of our residents know a large part of that Baldwin Widening Project was ac acquiring property in order to um, add the boulevard and the additional lanes. Uh, and so that said, this is excess property. 
The township has the first right to purchase it. It's currently owned by the road commission. They would sell these two parcels um, for $150,000, which is the appraised value. Also, um, because federal funds were used in the acquisition of the property, uh, there's a formula that this has to go through in order to set the price. So there's no bartering on price, if you will. That's the price. Um, I think this is a great idea for the township um, to acquire um, some additional parcels to keep some green space on Baldwin. Um, at least for now, in the future, we could always sell it, but I think it's a great opportunity for us to do that. And we did talk about this earlier, and um, I think um, we should consider it. Yes, um, and I think um, before you make your motion, yep. I know where your head was headed, <laughs> so I'd love for you to make her comment first because I think it's a good idea. Uh, I think that, yeah, say. use the proceeds that we just sold the last parcel to be able to purchase this parcel, and we'll still be able to have some excess to put back into the general fund so which i really like that so yeah. if we if we just made 270 if we take 150 of that you know we can say use the proceeds from the sale of the property the kpmf to pay for this we'll actually add we'll end up ahead net you know roughly um net dollars. so i let I, I could tell that's what you're going to say <laughs> that's why i wanted to put you here so yes miss schultz okay so what donnie just said um, I move to approve the purchase of parcel 0929 326 022 and 0929 326 021 in the amount not to exceed $150,000 with funds to come from the general fund fund balance, noting the proceeds of the sale to KMPF. How do you want that? KMP. Well, maybe you say with the, with, the, with the funds that come from the proceeds from the sale of KPMF. Got it. What he just said. And authorize the budget director to make the appropriate budget adjustments and further noting that if the purchase happens in 2022, appro approve the purchase of parcel 0929-326-021 and 22 in the amount not to exceed 150000 And that's necessary because we don't know the timing of either sale and purchase. Thank you. Support. Okay. And again, um, so thank you. There's a motion of support. I think that, um, you know, we, we're, we have the pocket park with the playful dragon, um, you know, at our almost our southern border, near our southern border. Uh, we do have the property at Baldwin and Pasadena for another pocket park. I don't think you can have enough green spaces, especially since we've made the focus of that corridor to be very pedestrian friendly. So we're not designing or building a park tonight. We're just retaining the right to do that. This board, or future board, could decide in the uh, in the future that this is not a good idea and we could sell the property um, at that time. But I think it makes sense right now to, to sort of do this. Any other comments or questions from the board? Any public comment? Seeing no one run forward. Um, Clerk Schultz, would you please call the roll? Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? Yes. That motion passes 7-0. Moving on to uh, the last item on pending business. This was brought down um, from item 7C. It's now 8C. Board meeting dates. This was on page uh, 45. And um, Ms. Steele, you asked to bring this down. We did talk about this today, but then we all ran out of here for different emergencies and didn't have a chance. We were hoping to talk about it before the meeting internally, but we didn't get that chance. So it's actually on page 44. Right, thank you. So my only concern is um, we have two meetings in October and then we only have one meeting in November and the, the gap between the 17th and the 21st is four weeks and four days. And I know we're in the middle of an election and that's, um, I'm just concerned about not having a meeting for that long and that if we could possibly consider having three meetings in October and one in November um, and then that way we wouldn't have such a gap. That's my concern. And there are, and I know we, we talked briefly about this, and sorry we didn't get a chance to talk to you, Penny. Um, we did, I think there are five Mondays in October, correct? So you have it on Halloween, the board meeting on Halloween? Is yeah. that what you're proposing? Well, that would be. That would be. I, unless, I mean, I just, I just look is, at is the, the volume. Is November 1st or November 8th? 8th. Okay. Um. You could propose to do it on the 1st, on a Tuesday, so we stay off of Halloween. Um, I, I see both sides. Obviously, we don't want to have an election the night before. A, we don't want to have a board meeting the night before a huge election. So I agree with not having it on November 7th. Um, 
So but what? I also know that sometimes it's challenging when we're four weeks between. What and, if we didn't change what we're doing here tonight, but we kept in reserve that the supervisor could call a special meeting if need be for that week, that first week in no November or that 31st, as Donnie suggested. And then we're, we're not scheduling a meeting, but you're calling it as needed. I mean, I, I mean, Dan, I can always call a special meeting, right? right? Yes. Yeah, right. Um, Don't need a motion. Um, okay. I mean, it, that's an option. Well, yeah, I'm just concerned that's like, you know, like, so the publications and making sure that we know in ahead of time and stuff. I, it usually runs, not necessarily for my, you know, it's usually you guys have, you know, between board bills mm -hmm. and contracts and um, mm -hmm. there's a lot to, that's a lot of time in between. I can tell you that I won't have much coming on that agenda on the 31st. We're going to be extremely focused on that election. We can try to keep the agenda light. Mm -hmm. um, and if you need to call one, we'll call one. You can do that anytime. Okay. Donnie, would that meet with your approval? Uh, I'm... Or you could have it and then cancel it. Or is that I'm pretty which sure we're gonna, I'm, I'm pretty positive that we will not have at least. I'm not calling any names, but I'm probably pretty sure at least two people probably I know wouldn't come on the 31st because they'll be busy with their children. Oh, okay. For sure. So I'd, I'd be worried about getting a quorum, unless you wanted to schedule one for the first, which is Tuesday, and you just put in there that it's a Tuesday because it's a 31st following Halloween, and we were trying to avoid. I like a good idea, November 1st. I feel better about the first. Yeah. yeah. Makes more sense. And then we can always, we can always cancel it, but I do, I do think it's, it does, it's, it's easier, I think, to cancel than to, and, and we will, knowing that it's going to be crazy, we will try not to be loading up tons of stuff on the agenda. Sometimes we can control it, sometimes we can't, right? So maybe we can make that motion, approve it as presented, adding November 1st. Approved, approved as amended. As amended, I'm sorry. To include Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. Yeah. And you would consider canceling it if it's not needed. I, I think that, yeah. I, I would say that we would, on <laughs> October 17th, we would have something on that agenda that night. If we have, if we think we can get by and not meet for four weeks, we sure. would just cancel yep. November 1st. That sounds good. So I move, um, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm open to always canceling meetings if we don't have stuff on the agenda. <laughs> I, I too. We, I can move, we can do that. I move to adopt the 2022 meeting date resolutions as amended, noting that we have added an additional meeting um, for November Tuesday, November 1st, 2022 at 7 o'clock. Support. And, and I'm going to say I probably won't be here because that's when I train my chairman. Um, that Tuesday before yep. those board meetings, so don't count too much. I mean, I think the goal will be we're going to try to keep things as light as possible so that I know, I mean, I, so I'm, I'm sure in this election you'll be pulling on not just the clerk staff, but there'll be lots of people working to try to pull this I thing I promise out. you. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I think that was good and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So thanks for bringing it to our attention, Donnie, and sorry we didn't get a chance to talk to you before yeah, this. No today. worries, guys. We got um, it. Any other comments or questions from the board? We're adding in one more date that on top of what was already published. Any public comment? All right. Um, uh, all those, it's a, no. it's a resolution roll call, please. Um, Bernie? Yes. Del Rimpo? Yes. Flood? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Schultz? No. Steele? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, folks. That's fine. That motion passes 6-1. Um, all right, next item is our reports. We have three tonight. First is our police and fire reports. I move to uh, file the police and fire report with comment. Go ahead. Report. Uh, so just real quick, I, I mean, there's no words that can explain what happened in Oxford, but I do think it's important to um, point out the community co collaboration um, that we were able to provide. Um, so just briefly, what we did transport one of the patients with a gunshot wound, and that patient uh, had, did survive and was discharged from the hospital. Um, and also, Chief Duke did take over um, when, uh, obviously, for Orion, but for Oakland and Oxford, too, when, obviously, all hands on deck were uh, needed in, in, um, at the high school. So to, to know that, you know, calls were still coming in uh, when that tragedy was taking place, but someone had to take charge, and thankfully, Chief Duke was, was here to be able to do that. 
So, um, again, not to bring light to it, but I think it's important for us to, to understand. I think that helps with, you know, it's part of the healing, knowing that our people and our equipment, we're, we're there to help when needed. That's it for me. You can read the reports on our website. I usually pop them up on the screen. Uh, any other comments or questions from board members? Public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? B, property tax apportionment 2021 updated pie chart. I wish I could show this on the screen. <laughs> it's, um, I can just real quick. It's um, just where do your taxes go? And it's the, um, the millage rates of how it's split up accordingly. It's on our website on the treasurer's page. And you would think that we would have 2022. However, we won't know what our 2022 millage rates are until you, you might have a millage proposal added and voted on next year. So, um, and that's what your taxes are based on. And um, homestead, non-homestead, and it's all spelled out as well as the pie chart. Move to receive and file as presented. Support. Moved by Schultz, supported by Urbanowski. Um, questions, comments? I think it's cool. It is on our website. Um, the one thing you do not see on this chart, which I like to point out to residents when they yell at me, is you don't see a sliver for roads. There's nothing in there for roads. Zero for roads. We don't get any money for roads. Um, so I'm being serious. I mean, I'm a little sarcasm there, but it's it's true. Um, and I just spent a half hour with the residents today, not quite, but a, quite a bit of time with the residents today that explaining the same thing because their roads are, are terrible. Mike. I remember when uh, Trustee Steele first took office as Township Treasurer, she came up with that great pie chart. And it gives you a percentage uh, for every dollar you pay on our taxes here in Orton Township. And I remember very distinctly when uh, the former uh, school superintendent, Marion Janopoulos, was at the board meeting and Donnie gave her the copy and she says, oh, Donnie, don't, don't show that around. Because <laughs> we all know that uh, our schools are our, our greatest value that we invest in, so it keeps our property values up. So Just want to make a little comment there. If you look at the chart, you'll see that more than 50% of the taxes are for schools. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to make one more comment. So when people say, oh, this is this brand new building, this is where all my tax dollars go, we can say, nope. Not a piece of pie. I mean, we, and that's small really good. That's come pie. up three it's times today. And, and as we have more people come through the building, um, I actually had two residents come in the building and say that, oh, this is where all my taxes are going. Uh, if we would have not funded this the way we did, we would have had to pass a special millage. Mm -hmm. The way this building is being funded and paid for is through money we had saved, and first, and then second, um, the revenue coming from the marijuana um, facilities and the uh, landfill post fee. Um, none of the property taxes are figured into um, the purchase and the operation payments. of this building, the payment of this building. So we found creative revenue streams to pay for this. Um, so your tax bill, you know, you can make the argument that, you know, some of it goes here, but really, I mean, it was, the, we'll show you that chart. When we do our grand opening, we're gonna do a good recap of the whole building. This is our soft opening. Um, <laughs> So anyway, yep, good stuff. Take take study that, look at that. Um, is there any other questions for, for the board comments? Any public comment on the chart that you can't see unless you're looking at it on your phone? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And it's available online. Yeah, it's on our website, correct. Mm -hmm. um, next item, our last report of the night is a notice of an online public auction for Orient Township Hall Furnishings. So here's an online auction. It's going to begin on December 17th at 9 o'clock a.m. and close on December 28th at 8 o'clock p.m. Desk, chairs, cabinets, office furnishing, technology, all kinds of items will be available. For more information, we are asking that you visit bid.sherwoodauctionservice.ell. LLC, I'm so sorry, it's been a long day, dot com. That would be um, bid.sherwoodauctionsservicellc.com 
or call Orion Township's Budget and Procurement Department, ask for, ask for Ashley at 248-391-0304 at extension N30. And there's a lot of things for sale that the township will be auctioning off. We've po properly noticed. It's on our website, and we are following all the protocols to be able to auction those par properties. Items. Okay. This is just a receive and file. Well, did you make that motion? Or you I just, did. Okay, it's moved by Schultz. Support. Supported by Urbanowski. And again, this will, um, <clears throat> uh, can we please put a link to this on our homepage as well? Um, yeah, as, as um, Clerk Schultz mentioned, I mean, we, we brought some stuff over. There's a lot of things that have value that are in the old, old facility that we're going to try to get as much value for them and put that money back into our general fund. Um, and uh, part of the process there, that building will be torn down sometime in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, it will be turned back into a park. It will just roll back into part of Civic Center Park. By the way, we are calling this property also Civic Center. It's contiguous except there's a road between, you might call it Civic Center North. But um, <coughs> anyway, that is the plan. And if you're interested, all the, all the information will be on our website. So chairs, file cabinets, um, I don't know what they're going to tag. Maybe door handles, faucets. I don't know. Whatever has value, we're going to try to get value out of it. So. Any questions, comments from the board? Just a couple. Yeah. Um, I want to thank Ashley Coyle in the budget department and also Tandem Graves. They're keeping really great track of all the assets that the township has, and we're keeping careful track of what's being sold. So all of our records will be intact when we're done with this. We'll know what we had and what was um, a pr purchased by others through auction. And this is in accordance with our policies as well. Okay. Um, uh, that. Uh, any public comments? Sorry. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Completes our business tonight. We bring it to the public. Anyone want to give public comment? Seeing no one come forward, we'll bring it to the board. We'll start with. Julia tonight. I um, just want to say thank you to um, everyone who has done so much for um, our community and for Oxford's community. Coming from a school, um, it's been a really hard week and we know that we have so much further to go, but to see the outpouring of love from our businesses, from strangers, from everyone, um, it has been an amazing thing to be able to see and to be a part of. So thank you to everyone for um, all of the love this week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Kim. I echo that. And I also just wanted to pass on some information from uh, North Oakland Community Coalition relative to um, helping uh, both students and families in Oxford and here as well. Uh, they're working with the, uh, the NOCC is working with the Oxford response team to create a comprehensive list for mental health supports being made available to the Oxford community and Orient community. Um, to view it, go to NOCCMI.org. Um, if you are a provider or you know of a provider, please get in touch with them. Uh, send an email to Sam Anchor, S Anchor at NOCCMI.org. They are vetting and updating the list frequently. Um, and working on getting that information. Well, the, actually the document I think just links back to NOCC. So they're doing all the vetting of, of the mental health um, stuff. I was able to um, meet with some people at NOCC and some about 20 kids from the high school on Friday via Zoom um, to talk about some of the things that maybe they're looking for in terms of um, support and what they can do to support their fellow students in Oxford. Um, and we're still working on that, but if there are any um, young folks out there that want to get involved, also go to NOCCMI.org and then join the Youth Action Board, YAD. Um, but I just also want to say thank you to our first responders um, for being so strong for all of us this week and to our, our teachers for keeping our kids in their hearts. Thank you. Honey. Um, Pastor Josh prayed all of our hearts, and I'm very thankful that he was here tonight to pray for the Oxford community, and I'm so thankful for our churches that have been uniting our communities together. There's a great outpouring of love, and there are no words to even express what we feel about this, but I was so thankful for the prayers here tonight. We need 
to continue to pray for the families and just reach out to them as other board members have said and do what we can to help. Thank you, first responders, too. I can't even imagine what that was like for you. And Chris, thank you, too, for keeping us current on things that are happening in the community. That's so important that as leaders that we're able to be aware um, real time what's going on, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Donnie, what do you think for us tonight? Um, boy, it's going to get harder going down the line here. <laughs> so uh, we are a Lion's Basket um, a facility for drop-off for food donations, and um, any one of the you can bring them to the treasurer's office because we're having a little contest, and <laughs> I'm in the treasurer's office, so you can drop them off at our desk. And um, that's for uh, the to create the baskets, and any extra food will go to fish. Um, I just want to say thank you, Chris. I just love our new facility. I know it was a team and a village that put this together, and Dave and everybody in this room had their hands in Aaron, and, and I know they used the fire truck and the wagon and Sam and Tammy and everybody on this board. I mean, this is a project that it took a village to build, and it will be here for uh, generations to serve our community in a positive gathering way. So we need positive gathering sites for this community. And sorry. It's been a raw couple years, and this was a big addition of rawness that this community um, you can see the love and the grace in which everybody has come together to support these grieving families. And I just hope that we continue on this because that's what we, uh, so that's all we have is love and kindness for each other. So it will continue for, um, uh, for a long time for these families. So uh, to keep the prayers and keep our hearts lifted. So thanks, Chris. Thank you. Mike. I'm well, choked up too. I have to <laughs> gather my thoughts for a minute. Uh, Donnie and I are both wearing Oxford Wildcat colors tonight. Her and I are both die in the wool like wearing dragons. But with tonight, we're Oxford Wildcats. And not only tonight, but whatever it takes to get through this, this tragedy. Never thought in my lifetime living in this community, born and raised here, would have to feel something like this. <clears throat> I think what the other communities are finding out up here, especially in Northern Oakland County, we may have our rivalries, but when we comes to anything like this, we're all one. And what, what pains one pains the other. So just want to give our heartfelt uh, thoughts and prayers out and hope to God we never have to live through another tragedy like this in our lifetime. That's it. Thank you, Mike. Brian? Um, so there's not much more that I can say that my fellow board members haven't, but obviously, uh, you know, the, you, you grieve and you feel the pain for Oxford and, you, and you, you pray for them and their families and everyone moving forward. The one bright side, if there is one, um, that could come of this is obviously the community support. Um, I just, I, I've been blown away by how many different businesses have stepped up? Um, I know Sick Pizza, I mean, it's a new pizzeria wait, raised, what, $80,000 in a couple days. I mean, that just goes to show the, the heart and love uh, that these both of our communities have. So, um, like I said, I, everyone else has said it more eloquently than I have, but, uh, you know, I try to look at the bright side of things, and, you know, that, that definitely is one of them. Um, obviously, our, our thanks to all the first responders. Um, and everyone that's been involved in this, I mean, it's, it's been just an awful thing to deal with all around. Um, trying to explain this to young kids, uh, I just keep saying, don't, don't try to make sense of it because it doesn't make any sense. There, you'll never make it. Just, just love, love one another, you know, and uh, we'll get through this together. So, um, Oxford, we're with you. We, we won't forget you. It's going to be a long haul, but we have your, you have our full support. Um, and just if, if there's, I know at the end of the year, a lot of people like to give money to things and they like to fundraise. Uh, obviously, we all know 
what we can do. I, there's there's many GoFundMe pages for these uh, these families. Um, I mean, the, the businesses have been phenomenal. Um, they've been giving away their profits to try to help. I mean, you know, as always, shop local, but you know, try to try to find ways to to give to these families and these organizations that have really stepped up and 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 helped everyone get through this. So, again, our prayers with Oxford, and uh, we all hope for brighter days. Thank you, Brian. I have a few comments tonight as well. Starting with with what's on everyone's mind. I mean, um, can't say enough about the response. Um, you know, I've I've been in some tricky situations and. Being at that Meyer and seeing the parents trying to find their children was something that I'll never forget. Um, it was chaos, and just um, it was is is like a, something that honestly I I keep replaying in my mind. Um, in spite of the chaos, our team performed unbelievably. Um, I saw it with my own eyes. I, every single deputy that we have was there on the scene. Our own Lieutenant Ophira is one of the leads in the whole investigation. He's in charge of following up with all the victims and their families and taking care of them, and he has done phenomenal. I don't think he's slept. On top of that, we have idiots from across the world that think it's funny to um, say they're going to do harm in our community, and uh, he's the lead on that. So you would not believe how much these people have been working um, to protect and keep our community safe. And it is heroic at best. I have uh, some stories I'm going to share at our next meeting with some images um, that will be powerful when I can share them with you. Um, one of our deputies um, tore his Achilles running into the building and cleared the entire building with a torn Achilles until they made him stop. Um, I mean, there's so many heroes. I had breakfast with the four paramedics from Orion Fire on Friday um, that um, transported patients and um, just to check on them and you know it's just we are so blessed to be served by such um, some people that care so much about our community and and really don't want credit but I'm gonna give I'm gonna shine the light on them as much as we can a um, couple more things I, I know it was mentioned um, if you do the outpouring of support has been phenomenal um, the governor I went to church with the governor yesterday at Kensington. Um, she's been here every day in Oxford and Orion. Um, she really wants to just be present, um, which we really appreciate. Tomorrow, um, Superintendent Ben Kirby and I are meeting with Congresswoman Slotkin to um, work with her to make sure that our schools have everything they need to open and be safe. Um, so I appreciate the support that we're getting from, from, from all of our electeds. We need it. Um, the, um, tomorrow there'll be a funeral for Tate, and it's at Kensington Church. It is open to the public. Um, I want to thank NOTA. I've been working with NOTA. They're providing five buses and drivers that are volunteering their time. If people want to go, the um, funeral's at noon. There'll be pickup locations at Culver's, Palazzo de Bacci, and I didn't tell you yet, Aaron, but the Wildwood Amphitheater parking lot. Um, so if people want to park, um, it. Um, no media is allowed, um, and so. But I know there's lots of students in Oregon that are looking to go to that funeral as well. And if you can't park at Kensington, you can park at Culver's, Plaza de Bachi, or um, the Wildwood parking lot, and the Nota bus will pick you up for free and take you to Kensington. The shuttle start at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, December 7th, and we'll run until everyone gets back to their vehicles. Thank you, Lynn Gustafson and the amazing drivers of NOTA who are volunteering their time uh, to do that. There are so, so many things that happen. Our Lake Orion school buses and drivers um, drove um, students to the vigil. I know um, our own trustee Dalrymple worked at Friendship Park to help people that wanted to go to the vigil in Oxford get on buses. Um, uh, it's been just remarkable. If you want to give money, um, please give money to Oxford Bank or Genesis Credit Union. The GoFundMe's are not bad. Um, we are, just so you know, the Sheriff's Office is vetting every single one of those because there are a lot of them to make sure that the money will get to the uh, where they're supposed to go. Um, our team is working on that as well in, in assisting Oxford. Um, but our GoFundMe takes 8%. Um, so 
If you want 100% of your dollars to go to the victims, um, give it to Oxford Bank or Genesis Credit Union because 100% plus is going to serve and give it to you some matching funds as well. Um, you know, the community is fragile. And then this afternoon when we heard there was an active shooter at the Beaumont building. I flew there as did everyone else. Sheriff Bouchard was actually at Kensington for the viewing of Tate and he was there as well. There was not an active shooter, um, but there was a shooting. One person was shot. The per it was not a random event, um, so people don't have to worry. Obviously, that makes people nervous, certainly. Um, I'm sure the sheriff or the under sheriff have already said more uh, since we've been sitting here because um, they know who did it. Um, and it sounds like it was a, um, a deal gone bad. Uh, and it just happened to be in Orion in the parking lot. It was not in the building. Uh, it was not in the building. Uh, but we did have buildings and businesses and the schools locked down this afternoon in an abundance of caution, uh, but no one else was in danger. <coughs> it's hard to hear that, but that's uh, unfortunately the reality we are in today. Um, and then just last, I just want to talk for a minute about this building um, and the teamwork, the team, the team, the team. Um, the team has been phenomenal. It's amazing we are sitting here. Would have never thought this was going to happen. But the, um, I'll tell you specifics <coughs> at um, a time in January when we have a grand opening to the public where we can tour the building and have a fun event. Just doesn't make sense to have a fun event anytime right now. Um, but I want to thank our staff. They've been phenomenal. We've lived in the construction zone this whole week and we worked a lot of hours. <coughs> um, uh, Dave, our IT. Uh, Sam from my office. Um, I, I don't think they've they've really much been home uh, over the past uh, week and a half. Um, so thanks everyone for patience. You would not know this, but we have no power here right now. One benefit of being in this nice new building, we've lost power from this windstorm today. I don't know a few hours ago. We're on generator. Everything works. Um, that's not the reason the TVs don't work. They're just not quite installed yet. Uh, but in two weeks, we'll we promise everything will be working. There'll be things for you to see when you're here. Um, and also, yeah, I want to thank ONTV for being here and uh, we have all the bosses here tonight for ONTV, making sure we run smooth. But um, this building is remarkable. We came up with a creative solution that we've been trying to come up with for 20 years. This board had the guts to do it. We got so lucky, blessed um, at timing, um, the way things all happen. And I'm just really, really, really grateful. Last, we are having a parade and a high jolly folly. There was a lot of discussion about this. We postponed it from last Friday and Saturday to next Friday and Saturday, not this coming, but the following, the 17th and 18th. Um, the show will go on. I can tell you there will be tributes to Oxford um, and all of our friends, and I agree with what, what was said. I mean, we, we have a lot of teasing back and forth, um, but Jack Curtis is a dear friend, the supervisor there, and I have spent time with him every single day since last Tuesday including over the weekend, just letting them know that we support him and we want to help and, and they need a lot of help. Uh, and so we're going to have our parade. We're going to honor and respect those that we lost, but we're also going to try to enjoy the holiday season as well. Um, so that's happening, the Holly Jolly Folly on the 17th, the Gowling and the parade on the 18th. Um, and then last you'll see um, out in front of our building, searchlights. There are four beams of light that shine to the sky to honor the four um, that were lost way too soon. And um, that was an idea. Our staff came together quickly um, on Wednesday morning. Uh, what could we do? And that was an idea that came out of our op my office um, with someone on our team. Um, we found someone that had them and they're installed in them. They have a local uh, family that's paying for them and it's just a tribute. So you see those out front of our building. Uh, we, I also drove those up to the vigil in Oxford on Friday and a lot of people got to see that. It's a cool um, four static lights that just shine and we'll have those up through the first of the year. Thank you all for your patience with us and um, it's been a really hard week. But we are resilient. We love our friends and neighbors and this has really kind of given us the opportunity to really focus on what's really important and I think we've all had the opportunity to do, to do that this week. So with that, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.56 p.m. So moved. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks.